And now we're going to move into really the bulk uh, of what I think is very important uh, about reporting and different lesions we're going to see in the breast. Um, so we're going to review how to um, label and measure images. We do this in two ways, in our report and on the ultrasound images themselves. And then we're going to go over what we include in our written report. So on your ultrasound images, on the machine and on the images themselves, you want to label uh, where the ultrasound was performed, the date of the ultrasound exam, the patient name and their ID and or their date of birth the operator's ID, so in our group, we always put the initials of whoever the doctor is doing the ultrasound, as well as the annotations for your lesions. So when we talk about annotations, you want to give a lesion location and the plane in which you're scanning. It's required that you document which breast this is, the right or the left, the o'clock face position, the distance of the lesion or where you're taking your image from the nipple, the transducer orientation, and op optional to document your depth. I just wanna make a note that when we document the distance of a lesion, it's from the nipple, not the areola. So how this graphic representation, this is incorrect. This would be documenting from the areola. We want to document from the nipple as we have here, and that's because the areola width can be widely variable. So you always wanna document the distance of a lesion or your ultrasound image from the nipple, um, and they suggest estimating relative to the transducer face, especially in a small breast. I just estimate the distance from the nipple, but rulers work well too, uh, and we keep some plastic rulers in our ultrasound rooms. Uh, I find this more helpful with a woman with a very large breast where I want to be more accurate uh, to make sure that my colleague can find this same lesion. Uh, this old scheme of distance from the nipple in one, two, three, and depths of the lesions in ABC, they've eliminated and don't want us doing this anymore. Um, when we talk about transducer orientation, in most places in the body when we perform ultrasounds, we document in transverse and longitudinal, as you see in that graphic representation, uh, which is okay. Uh, we choose to do radial and anti-radial. Um, so again, radial, as you see here, where we're pointing towards the nipple, and anti-radial, where we're not pointing uh, not towards the nipple, and we we choose to do that in our group for a few reasons. We know that lesions within the breast tend to grow along those ductal systems, and that's going to be in the radial dimension. So you tend to see the true margins, the true extent of masses better when you do radial and anti-radial than trans and longitudinal, but either is okay. When we talk about lesion measurement, when you uh, want to measure a lesion, the caliper placement, the frame of reference should be your mass, not the rectangular frame of your ultrasound image. So here you see that our calipers have been placed correctly. They're along the largest axis of the lesion. This is a correct way to measure something on breast ultrasound. This would be incorrect. Here we placed our calipers relative to our ultrasound image. Uh, so this is incorrect. Again, you really want to measure based off the mass itself. Um, he, we want to get three dimensions when possible, a minimum of two. For example, here, when we can't really measure in this direction because of the posterior acoustic features, but at least two uh, measurements, and often we can get three measurements for our lesions in the breast on ultrasound. So again, here's correct. And how you report them, they want you to do the longest horizontal by vertical by the orthogonal horizontal. So the view in which the lesion is the biggest is the view in which you are, or the plane in which you want to obtain the two measurements. And in the shorter plane, you're gonna get a single orthogonal horizontal measurement. So as far as the images we take and measurements, you want to take all images with and without calipers. So usually what I do, if I see a mass in the radial plane, I'll freeze my image, I'll take a picture, and then I will measure that frozen image and also obtain an image with calipers. You wanna to measure to the closest millimeter. And if you go in to do a follow-up exam or a biopsy, and if your location varies slightly from the prior exam, 
If it's just minimal, you can just report that as per prior to stay consistent that we all know this is the same lesion we're documenting, or you could report the new location with explanation of why it might be slightly different, such as differences in technique or positioning.